skin, big bandage. Hey guys, what's up? It is my face story back again. And today what we are talking about is how to prevent acne scars. So obviously there are a few tips and tricks, things I'd like to share, how you can prevent acne scars. But first let's talk about exactly what is an acne scar, how it forms, and then we'll get to the how not to quote unquote get acne scars. First of all, I do wanna say that scarring is um, partially genetic. The way your body heals and repairs itself is partially genetic. So that is why some people can have one or two blemishes and get terrible scars and other people can have a face full and get no scars. So the way your body heals itself, the way your body is going to send out that collagen fiber to repair itself, that is partially genetic. So these are tips that can lessen scarring if you're prone to scarring, but it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, there won't be any mark at all because that's completely normal to have at least a little bit of hyperpigmentation left um, once the blemish is gone. So with that being said, <laughs> let's talk about the aftermath of dealing with a pimple, aka the scar. So scars are typically results of inflamed blemishes. I'm about to show you guys one right now. Well, obviously that, that's scarring. Ah, come on. Yeah. So I do have an inflamed pimple right now. Um, for some reason, I don't know why I've been breaking out in this like nook area where like my cheek meets my uh, jawline, which is pretty weird. But yeah, that is what an inflamed pimple looks like. And inflamed pimples occur when, once a blemish is pumped full of oil, dirt, and debris, it starts to kind of grow and expand. And with this expansion, it becomes more and more inflamed. And the more inflamed the blemish is, the longer it lingers on the skin, the more likely you are to have acne scarring. I know for, um, a long time my pimples would last months months uh, but I kept thinking you know as long as I don't pop them that's not always necessarily the case the longer the blemish the more inflamed it is the longer it lingers on the skin the greater the chance you have of developing a scar so most of the time non inflamed blemishes like blackheads and whiteheads those aren't going to leave a mark on the skin most of the time as long as you're not like messing with it too much um, but it's really just like the inflamed ones that you need to worry about so as the blemish swells and becomes more inflamed, the pore swells with it. And if it breaks, if like it ruptures near the surface, then the scarring is usually temporary or mild. But if it breaks deep in the follicle wall, that is what causes more severe acne scarring. Um, when the cyst or pustule or papule or whatever is super deep, then once it ruptures, the rupture is deep as well. The bacteria that's in the pimple becomes lodged into the dermis and it starts destroying healthy tissue. All the bacteria starts destroying the healthy tissue. And to repair the damage that has been done, your body begins to reproduce new collagen. So it sends out these new collagen fibers to fix the damage that's done. Unfortunately, the new collagen never really looks the same as the old collagen. It's kind of like a patch job or repair job. And so that is what is a scar. There are things, obviously, treatments you can do to minimize the looks or the effects of scarring and completely get rid of them. Using the Banisher from Banish is my number one go-to. You guys know my skin has improved so much since I used it. I actually used it last night, so that's why it looks good right now. Um, except for that, that's so annoying, what the heck? So now we're gonna talk about preventing scars. These are my tips and tricks for you. Number one, and this might seem like super obvious, but find the root cause. So finding the root cause of your pimple could take a while. It's taken me a pretty good amount of time, but I think I've gotten it like kind of more balanced under control at this point. But I personally believe that everybody's acne stems from some sort of imbalance in their life, whether it be mental, physical, emotional, um, some sort of imbalance that's causing this inflammation inside of you that's causing, you know, built up chronic stress, food intolerances, digestive issues, hormonal imbalances. There's so many different causes of acne and I really do believe that it's because there's something deeper going on inside and your body is trying to signal that to you. So obviously if you find the root cause, then you can treat the root cause of your acne and then you won't get pimples. If you don't get pimples, then you won't get scars. So that's the ultimate goal here, right? So to do that, obviously, 
try working with a health professional like a dermatologist or a hormone specialist like an endocrinologist or even going a more holistic route and trying to see what you can figure out that way. For me, you know, it's taken a lot of trial and error. I found my two biggest triggers are dairy and more recently what I found out about myself is that I have, I think, a gluten intolerance which is terrible because bread is life, but I haven't had any gluten in about a month and all my spots cleared up, except for I have that one. But I'm, I mean, I mean, that's still pretty good. It's kind of crazy. But you know, once you're on the right track, it could take months, it could take a year, but eventually just know that you'll be able to free yourself from the cycle and it will be worth it. So don't give up. Obviously, Acne is inflammatory disease. Scarring is because of excess inflammation. So decreasing inflammation is also going to be a number one goal here. One huge way that I like to de decrease inflammation is obviously you can eat anti-inflammatory foods like garlic, ginger, things like that. Green tea is highly anti-inflammatory and also has a lot of antioxidants in it. You can also try icing your blemish. So icing it for five to 10 minutes a day, you know, on and off, that will help to take down a lot of the swelling. And once you're taking down that swelling and inflammation down, chances of scarring are gonna be less as well. Another thing, if you're in a pinch, you could always try using aspirin with a little bit of water and you can make a paste with it and apply that to the blemish. Obviously it's not non-toxic, not natural, but it will help with inflammation. Another option is going to be cortisone shots. And cortisone shots, I, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's a steroid. Is it a steroid? I'm pretty sure. Um, but it's a shot that you get from your dermatologist and they inject it straight into the pimple and it basically just gets rid of the pimple, decreases swelling super quickly, like within 24 to 48 hours, it'll be gone and you won't have a scar left behind. But obviously, if you have the money, resources, means to do that, that is another really awesome option. This one is another obvious one, but don't pick. You know, if you pick, Look how long my nails are. Ah, they got so long. But if you pick, there's dirt underneath your nails, unless you're like scrubbing them every day, which you're probably not. There's dirt underneath your nails, there's dirt on your fingers, and you're lodging that actually deeper into the um, spot, into the pimple. And then once the pimple ruptures as well, all of that bacteria is getting spread around all over your face and that's gonna cause more pimples. So really don't pick. But since I know that you're probably gonna pick anyways, do it. <laughs> safely and effectively and cleanly make sure you wash your hands you sanitize the area you know use witch hazel on the cotton pad sanitize the pimple and then use like two cotton pads between your fingers like this like make sure your skin isn't touching pop it with the cotton and then sanitize again and then maybe put a spot treatment on to kind of seal it up that is like the most proper way to pop a pimple if you're going to do it honestly i think that sometimes if it is super inflamed and it has a white head at the surface. Definitely if it has big juicy white head, I think that means it's ready to be popped. But if it's a cyst, those are actually never supposed to be popped. They're not supposed to come to the surface. So with cysts, really just leave those alone. Let those guys kind of run their cycle within your skin and do their own thing. Cause the more that you pop and poke and pry at cysts, the more swollen and inflamed they're gonna get and you're just gonna get frustrated. So don't try to pop cysts. Another thing that you can do is treat at the first sign. So as soon as you start to see like a little red spot or as soon as you start to see anything resembling a pimple, swelling, any, you know, sometimes it gets like a little red and irritated, start to treat right away. Because the, re the reason that you want to do that is because that will lessen the chance of a scar forming as well. And what most people like to treat with is either some form of like, benzoyl peroxide or salicylic acid that usually takes care of the dead skin, the dirt, everything that's built up on your skin and will kind of reveal new fresh layers which will unclog the pore. Um, that is a little bit too harsh for my skin so what I like to use is tea tree or lavender oil and those essential oils again work really well almost just as well as seen in studies as benzoyl peroxide so that could be another option for you as well. So those are my tips and tricks on how to prevent acne scarring. I know this seems like super basic and probably stuff that you guys already know, but sometimes it's good to just like get back and stick to the basics. Do you see my dog's head? There you go there. So if you guys have any tips and tricks for acne scarring as well, make sure you leave them below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. And yeah, that is it. That is all I got for you guys. All right, bye friends.